seller financing. We're going to be going over a deal, breaking down the numbers, setting everything up for a solid seller financed investment. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I am James Wise. Stick around if you like what we're doing. Stick around if you want to learn about seller financing. Stick around if you want to get involved in real estate investing. Not just learn from gurus, but actually work with somebody one-on-one -on -one doing real deals. That's what we're doing today. We're doing a real deal with my man, Tim. Tim, you sent this to me because the seller is interested in financing it. You want to buy it. You're interested in seller financing because you've already told me you don't qualify uh, for a loan from the bank, right? And I know there's probably a lot of other people out there watching this that they can't get a, excuse me, they can't get a loan from a bank, right? So seller financing is a great tool to have in the toolbox, people. Seller financing allows us to purchase properties with low money down. The terms are completely negotiable. It's whatever we can convince the seller to do. Now, what you all need to understand, and I know a lot of people that sell courses, they ain't going to talk about this part of it, though. It's tit for tat. It's give take, right? Okay? There's not like a scenario where it's like the bank won't give me money, but some seller is just going to give me everything I want that's amazing for me with nothing in return, right? That's not logical, okay? So you might have to give a little push or pull here. And with this particular deal that you sent me, Tim, that's exactly what we're going to do, right? I believe... We could win on terms. I think we can get the seller to give us really amazing terms, but we're going to probably overpay a little bit, right? The seller's got to get something in return. So what I want to do now is take a quick break, and then I want to break down these things, all these numbers, in a complete line-by-line -line fashion. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into the numbers. Let's really break this thing apart piece by piece, okay? 1148 West 11th, Lorraine, Ohio. 4405 has been on the market forever. 147 days. Why? Because it's not fucking worth 89900 okay? It's, it's not worth that, all right? That is too much money for a property in this neighborhood. If you buy that at eighty nine nine, you are definitely overpaying. We only have two photos, by the way, right? One, two, okay? That's all, <laughs> that's all we get. We get one, two. The reason we only get two photos is because we got a long-term tenant in there. Long-term tenant. And I don't know how much they're paying in rent. All right? I reached out, but I didn't get an answer. And it doesn't matter, right? How much the current tenant is paying rent really doesn't matter, right? Because there's not a lot of people offering seller financing, number one. Number two, you have to understand that when you buy a rental property, the specific tenant that's actually in there is a blip in the radar, man. That doesn't matter. You're buying into the neighborhood. You're buying into the tenant base. You need to know what the thing's going to do long term, right? I got a lot of rental properties, right? A lot of rental properties. You're cycling through your tenants, man. You don't, like, buy a house and then you own it for 30 years and you have one tenant for 30 years. It's not how the game works, right? Don't focus on the person. You ain't buying that person, right? Focus on the market rent. The market rent of this property, $1,000, That'd be 12k a year, but you gotta account for the fixed and variable expense estimates and all that jazz. So after everything, all the dust settles, you're really only gonna make about 600, 6,440 a year, right? Now let's talk about price, price, price and terms, right? That's that's what the real thing is here. Price and terms, okay? This has been on the market forever because 89.9 is way too much. Truth be told, this property is probably only worth like 60. All right, 
This is probably a $60,000 house, okay? 60000 right? But it's give take. The seller's now willing to finance it because this seller's trying to extract as much value as they can. So it's give take, right? So we got to take a hit. We got to take our beating on price. We got to overpay. But then we win back on terms, okay? So what I would like to do is I'd like to negotiate a price with the seller on your behalf for 80 grand. My opinion, you're overpaying by $20,000, but we're going to make up for it by terms, right? I believe we have a reasonable shot at getting them to accept a 10% down payment, financed, the rest financed, 90% of the deal financed at 3% interest over 30 years. If we do that, what's that going to look like? Well, I gave you the NOI for the market rent, right? If we pick it up at 80, put down 8, get the seller to loan you the other 72, your NOI every month would be 537. Your mortgage to that seller is 304. That would leave you with a net cash flow after mortgage of 233. That would be a 35% return, right? So you could do a situation like this where the seller, they get more money than what their house is actually worth, win for them, and then the win for you is you're able to, if you can get the rent up to market rent, pull off a return that you couldn't have otherwise got if you're focused on trying to get a bank loan and you can't qualify, right? So it is a win-win, but you have to understand as the buyer, you're not yet up to that $1,000 a month rental, right? It could be a long-term tenant at like 700 750 800 but it doesn't really matter exactly what it is because the end goal, I just gave you what the end goal is. And as a buyer who's trying to work out seller finance deals, right, you don't have a lot of options, right? Like that would be like a best case scenario, right? There's not a lot of people that are just going to loan somebody a 90% loan to value on the house, even though, it, again, it is overpriced, right? But you're able to make something out of nothing, right? When I first got started in my career, I was able to utilize regular financing, but a combination of that along with the seller financing, right? These are nice toolkits, right, to utilize in your investment business, right? Because here's the thing, what people don't understand, right? These bank loans, they're the best loans there are. But here's the thing, you can get these awesome residential bank loans. You can get up to 10 of them, right? 30-year fixed interest, low interest. Number one, you got to put down 25%. We're trying to convince the seller to give us better terms. Give us only 10%, right? The other thing, those amazing bank loans, you only get 10, right? I think I said that, right? You only get 10. I should say it twice. I should say it three times because that's really important. You only get 10 of those, right? But you know what's great about seller financing? It don't count. You get as many of these as possible, right? So whenever you have the ability to jump on seller financing, even if you got to pay a little bit more, you should do it, right? Because you're really, you're turning something out of nothing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.